is Dr. Clayton Lane. This video will be about slap tears and their surgical management. Slap stands for superior labrum anterior posterior tear. In order to understand what that is, we have to look at a little bit of anatomy. Here we have a model of the shoulder joint. You can see that the biceps tendon runs into the joint of the shoulder and connects to the tissue at the top of the cup of the shoulder referred to as the labrum. If we look at that from the side here you can see the cup of the shoulder. You can see that the labrum runs uh, circumferentially all the way around the cup and then at the top you can notice that the biceps tendon uh, connects directly to the superior labrum and this is the site of injury that we're discussing today. Well how does that happen? Here we have a pitcher. You can see as he's throwing there's a hyper external rotation type force to his shoulder and you can imagine how that that external rotation force might pull on the biceps tendon pulling on the superior labral complex and cause injury and this is referred to as the peel back mechanism and we'll have a nice demonstration of that in the surgical video well how is the slap tear treated here you can see a diagram of what a slap tear is, the cup of the shoulder again, the biceps as it comes into the superior labrum and it pulls the labrum off of the cup or the glenoid of the shoulder and this is going to cause pain now every time the thrower or overhead worker puts their shoulder through that motion again. So here we have an arthroscopic picture of what that looks like. Here's the biceps tendon coming in. You can see how it's pulled the labral tissue away from the cup or glenoid. And so what you're going to see in this video is how we repair that. We're going to place two anchors in the bone uh, indicated by these circles here. And then what we'll do is use certain techniques to pass stitches through the labral tissue and then tie those down to reapproximate the labral tissue to the cup of the shoulder. So here we are at surgery. Uh, I've established an anterior portal and now I'm probing the superior labrum. You can see how the biceps has been detached from the glenoid or cup of the shoulder. Now here we can really see that peel back mechanism. You see as I externally rotate the shoulder as if um, the patient were throwing, the superior labral complex is pulled away from bone as the biceps uh, applies traction to it. Let's look at that in uh, full screen mode. Here you can see again as the biceps peels back the labrum, the labrum actually falls into the joint and that's going to pinch between the ball of the shoulder and cause pain. So here you see an arthroscopic shaver. What we're doing here is removing any early healing tissue. Additionally we're scuffing up and abrading the bone uh, so that it'll bleed. You can see that the uh, superior labrum has been mobilized here. That bleeding bone is what allows healing and that's why it's a very important part of the procedure. Now there what you're looking at is a spinal needle coming through the superior labrum. Um, we've picked out a spot where we want to place a stitch. The first stitch that you're going to see is just a smooth traction stitch. You can see as it comes through the needle and my assistant uh, retrieves it out the anterior portal. Now what that's going to do is allow us to mobilize the labrum so that I can place an anchor. And there you see the guide for the anchor coming into place. Then we drill the bone and impact a suture anchor, it's called, into the bone at the top of the, the cup of the shoulder. And then what we're going to do is use that previously placed suture to pass one arm of the suture anchor stitches through the anterior portion of this superior labral tear. So there you see the first stitch of our repair going into position. Now we've passed a second traction stitch and are passing the second stitch from the same anchor through the anterior portion of this superior labral tear. Now what we have to do is retrieve those arms of suture from above the labrum. There you can see them as they exit the labral tissue and then what we're going to do is uh, tie down those stitches and you can see a knot pusher there. It's a little bit difficult to see the knot but you can see how that restores the stability of the anterior portion of the superior labrum and now we have to work on the posterior portion indicated there. So there you see our anterior stitch once again. Now we're placing an anchor more posteriorly. 
there you see the guide in place and the suture anchor once implanted. Now we're going to use a little bit different device. It's a curve suture passer here um, so that we can pass from the anterior portal again. My assistant there is retrieving the cable passer this time out the anterior portal. Then we'll retrieve the stitch that we want to pass through the tissue. We'll place that in a little uh, loop of the cable at the end and you'll see how I'm able to uh, pass the suture through the labral tissue with that. Look at that one more time. There's the curved uh, suture passer going into place. I pick the spot where I, I want the suture to be ultimately. Pass the passing cable. You can see how it has a loop there at the end. We'll then retrieve the last stitch for, of this repair. Place it in the loop of the cable suture passer and pass it through the tissue. And in this case, you'll be able to see the knot pusher a little bit better. There you see me uh, sliding my knot down to the level of bone and compressing the superior labral tissue down to bone. And then I'll throw uh, four or five throws uh, to secure the knot. And then here you see a knot cutter coming into place. Now you can see how the stability of the superior labrum has been restored. It doesn't pull away from bone anymore. And then we take the shoulder through a full range of motion. And you can see now as I externally rotate the shoulder, there's no peel back or displacement of the superior labrum. Let's talk about the results of the surgery. A good study by Park in the American Journal of Sports Medicine this year showed that 75% of elite overhead athletes return to a full level of play. Now that's not quite as high as what we see in other sports surgeries, so that's important to note. However, if you look at Newman's study from 2012, you can see that 84% of athletes return to full level of play. That was because that was based on their perception of their re return to play. Additionally, you should note from that study that it takes about 11 months to return to full play, so that's a long time for an elite athlete. And uh, also notably, their satisfaction rate was much higher, 93%, even though some of them weren't returning to full level of play. They may have been able to return to another position and were happy with the reduction in pain. Factors that are associated with poor outcome, uh, people that use tobacco, have diabetes, are heavy overhead workers. So in summary, a slap tear is a labral tear that results from a traction injury on the biceps tendon. This is often during throwing. Certain tears require surgery and can be repaired arthroscopically.